It was August 12th, 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, just days before Rosie McLennan was the flag bearer at the opening ceremony of the 2016 Summer Olympic Games for Canada. And it was then, August 12th, she made history, becoming the first Canadian to successfully defend her Olympic title in an individual sport. Rosie McLennan joins us now after what has been a wild 24 hours in the world of sport. Uh, Rosie, we appreciate you making time. You have been an Olympian for Canada in each of the last two games. You are not going to Tokyo 2020, nor are any of your teammates, because the games are likely going to be postponed for a little while. How have you made sense of all of this over the last little bit? Uh, I mean, like the whole situation, things have been evolving very quickly. Um, and I think uh, it's been incredibly important to just try and take a step back and put it all in perspective. And I mean, what's going on with this pandemic is obviously so much bigger than sport. And I think it's important for everyone to kind of take a step back and really prioritize the health and well-being of themselves and also the people around them and do what they can to support healthcare workers and the people who are going to be on the front lines and help mitigate the spread of this virus. Rose, you're the uh, vice chair of the Athletes Commission, effectively the athlete's voice when it comes to the, the Canadian Olympic Committee, International Olympic Committee, and the sport federations. What has been the message that this, that the group of athletes have told the higher ups, if you will? Um, I mean, the decision was based on the evidence that was available to us. Um, we were having conversations with uh, the chief medical officer for Team Canada and um, just given the current situation, uh, I mean, there's there's training facilities across Canada that have been shut down and um, gyms that have been closed for now. And uh, we don't know when we'll be able to have access to those again. And I mean, think athletes are being really creative in the way that they're trying to prepare and uh, train from home, um, sharing that online a lot and even having some fun with it. But there's only so much you can do to train for peak performance from the confines of your your living room. Uh, so I think uh, this message is really about prioritizing health and not just the health of the athletes, but public health. It was on Sunday afternoon, Rosie, that the IOC effectively came out and said, we'll, we'll deal with this four weeks from now. We're going to take a look at the science. We're going to see where the world is then. And it seemed that's when all the other Olympic committees around the globe started to I don't know, add fuel to, to this and really start to make their own decisions on this. What, what's happened from your standpoint since that IOC decision came down on Sunday afternoon and the conversations you've had? I mean, I think first and foremost, uh, athletes are really grateful that cancellation isn't on the table. Uh, we want the opportunity to compete. We want the opportunity to show what we're capable of um, and to put on a good performance and have the world come together and unite through sport. Uh, but I think it became increasingly clear that this summer isn't the time for that. And um, I think it's really just focusing on Canad what's happening in Canada and the Canadian context. And with the guidelines that we have right now and the, I mean, the restrictions that are going into place, um, I think it was time that we needed to make a decision to have athletes it wasn't, it was no longer the right decision to have athletes continuing to prepare for the summer games. And as I said, it was just about really just taking a step back and um, putting it on into perspective and allowing the athletes to have some reprieve from that pressure and to be able to focus on their families, their loved ones, and the people around them. I mean, you're a competitor, Rosie. How do you balance the want to go out and win another gold medal this summer with the realization of what the heck's happening in the outside world? Um, I think it's hard for every, anyone to grapple exactly with what's going on. Um, but for me, it's just been important to really take a step back and put it all in perspective. And right now isn't the time to be focusing on high performance sport. And um, it's really about focusing on public health and doing what we can, each of us, to help mitigate the impact of this virus in Canada. So, Rosie, I mean, Dick Pound comes out on Monday afternoon, says the games are likely to be postponed. He suggested 2021. Is that a relief that you may have another kick at the can at this thing? Um, I Yeah, I think a lot of athletes would be excited about the prospect of postponement um, just because we can compete in an environment that's a lot safer, not only for 
the athletes, but for the world. Um, but it does have unintended consequences for other athletes. You will have athletes who it is a career ending decision and, um, or they will be forced to confront a really tough decision going forward. Um, but I think we all want a team Canada present in Tokyo when it ta is safe to do so. And um, I know that when it happens, if it's next year, uh, we'll be out in full force. We'll be ready and uh, excited to hopefully do Canada proud. Um, look, you're going to turn 32 in August. You've been through two of these already. You remember how excited you were before London 2012. I remember interviewing you that night at the opening ceremony at Olympic Stadium and just how pumped you were uh, to be out there with your teammates. What's your message to a young kid who's in their early 20s and about to embark in their first Olympic journey has been so excited and this is everything to them. If they reach out to you, what's your message to them? I, I mean, it's tough. Um, I think it's really hard for all athletes um, to under, maybe understand or um, come to grips with this decision but I would just really encourage them to take a step back and really try and put it in perspective and understand why the decision was made how the decision was made um, and that it was with the best interest not only of Canadian athletes health at mind but the health of Canada and right now it is about a lot more than sport this thing is so much bigger than sport and I think it does give us the opportunity to put it in perspective and sport is incredibly important to athletes and um, I think you can use it as an opportunity. You have maybe an extra year to fine tune your skills and hone in on your preparation and learn and grow and face obstacles and overcome them. And, um, obviously we've already had to adjust our plans and throw our training plans out the window and adapt. And I think it's really going to be about adaptability and resilience as key, two key traits that are going to need to be, um, trained and focused on over the next little while. So you're at home now in Toronto. Uh, there is There are no Olympics happening in July. Uh, Self-isolation and social distancing are the topics du jour. I guess my question to you then, uh, Rosie, is how are you staying sane? <laughs> um, well, I'm still staying active. Uh, we actually, we have a, a stationary bike here, so I've been riding that. I stretch every day. I meditate every day. I try and give myself the space to think about what's going on and process everything that's going on. Um, and then I come up with some workouts. I've been doing some virtual sessions with my trainer, uh, trying to stay as fit and active and healthy as possible. Um, but also having the chance to spend some more time with my husband. Um, so really just trying to focus on that and uh, get some fresh air every day and take it day by day. For you at this stage of your preparation, I mean, you had been planning for July, Whenever this thing gets gets solved and whenever life gets back to normal, whatever that may be, how long do you think it would take for you to be Olympic ready, to be in Olympic shape physically, especially, and even mentally, to be able to compete at the highest level? Um, I mean, I think we would take whatever we get and do the best we can with it. Um, I mean, I had an injury last April uh, from my ankle, and it took from that point until really the end of the year to be fully recovered but that was with an injury um I, I don't know I guess I don't really have an answer for you I think it's really dependent on the sport um and what they're able to continue doing within the confines of the restrictions that we have right now well Rosie stay safe over there wash your hands uh we appreciate you uh making time and uh hopefully the next conversation we have is about the rescheduling of the Summer Olympic Games. Perfect. <laughs>